Welcome one and all to episode six of La Podcast. We're here with Hoop, Saini, and the infamous ZZ Huncho. Uh, La Podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Use code La Podcast for 20% off their entire site. The best tools in the world for the land down below, uh, as Maurice Cheeks knows very well from last episode. Uh, so I want to start off on a very interesting topic. Stephen A. Smith has had a partial tear in his rotator cuff and bicep, along with a frayed labrum and a bone spur. How did he get the injury? I have no idea. But he's basically missing first take for an entire month. He's leaving ESPN to get this recovery. I want to talk about this because I had a shoulder surgery in the summer of 2020. And that is literally when I, I made my TikTok. I was out there in a full-on cast with my shoulder. I had a torn labrum. And I was I was recording videos, making stuff happen, and look where I am today. So I th is Stephen A. being is, is he being a wimp or or, or uh, is this warranted? I want to ask you guys. Well, personally, um, I just did a video on this last night uh, on my personal on TikTok, um, and it's it's just a tough blow to me, honestly, because Stephen A. Smith is you know he's one of those legends, and and when you're in the game for so long, you know veterans they tend to break down. You know Kobe when he tore his rotator cup. You know, he was sitting there on the bench with a little big cast all over him, and he looked like his arm it looked like he was half robotic or whatever. But that was cool because we were like, he put that blood, that that sweat, those tears into into his crap. And so my immediate reaction was, how does Max Kellerman feel? Because I thought to myself, like, if Stephen A was the one that you know what I'm saying, like they had beef. So I I literally DM Max Kellerman last night. Y'all y'all can see it if y'all saw the video. I DM'd him last night, and I simply asked him like seven questions. I was just like. You know, are y'all still beefing? You know, if you are beefing, like, have you ever thought about putting the beef aside? And then I was like, this was my quote. I said, you need to always remember, Max, anytime you go to McDonald's and you order a McDouble, tell them, please hold the beef because we don't like the violence. We don't like the violence. If they didn't hold the beef with their own beef right now and, and literally Stephen A is laid up in a hospital somewhere, like, you, you got to stop, bro. Like, now I feel like Max and Stephen A are like Tupac and Biggie, like of the NBA right now. So... That you know, I, I hope he I hope he has a speedy recovery because they're gonna need him. His 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 gang first take is gonna need him. So Sandy, what yeah. do you think? I uh I, I'll tell you this. I never once thought about Max Kellerman when I heard the news. Uh, so that's <laughs> interesting to hear from you, Z. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely being a wimp, man. Put a cat, bro. If Kobe and Clay Thompson can shoot free throws on a torn meniscus, all right. Stephen A. Smith can damn well put a cast on, sit on a seat, and start giving his blasphemous takes like we're all used to. What does his shoulder have to do with his mouth? Pause. I caught that myself. But seriously. Good job. You know, maybe like a week or two off because he's like fresh out of surgery. I get that. But bro, you want to fully recover from a shoulder injury before you go back on set? That's, that's, I think that's a little ridiculous to me. My uh, theory is that Donovan Mitchell is going to sign with the Knicks very soon, and he doesn't want to suck up the fact that he wants to go to MSG after they sign him. Apparently, they're huge front runners, but now we're, we're going to get into today's lineup because we're going to be talking about that a lot. Uh, starting off with the headlines, we're going to talk about DeAndre Ayton for a little bit. We didn't come up with a creative title for that. It's unfortunate, but uh, it's there. Are they tweaking? Uh, a very, very interesting are they tweaking. Um, then we have Spidey Senses featuring Donovan Mitchell. And I guess I could say it because we all know it's coming. Saney Secret Segment. At the Pause. <clears throat> My bad. What segment? I, uh, no, I, I didn't say anything. Uh, yeah. Only four today. So starting <laughs> off with the headlines, LeBron James has officially signed a partnership with LifeWater. Um, so LaWater is a thing now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we all know the history MJ has with Gatorade. Um, he was the poster boy back in the day. So I want to ask you the question, if you're out there playing ball, whatever sport, running, doing whatever, sweating, is your go-to drink Gatorade or water? Z, we'll start with you. Okay, honestly, it's a toss-up. Because if it's like scorching hot outside, like 95 degrees or more, like water's going to be obviously refreshing, like a cold, a cold bottle of water. You know what I'm saying? That Aquafina, La Drip, La Aquafina. But if it's like a cool like 85, like between like 70, 85, I would I would destroy a Gatorade pause. But I'm saying because like I would destroy a Gatorade, namely like, uh, you know, 
I'm trying to think right now, a cool blue or or the or the fruit punch red, like I would destroy him. It's just like it's something smooth. I feel like Paul George in that commercial every single time that I go over and I take a sip, and then I go out on the court and I'm I'm chucking it from forty. Like I don't care because I, I I got I got electrolytes running through my ZZ Huncho body, so it's like it's phenomenal. But go ahead, Zany, your turn, brother. <laughs> That was that was amazing. I uh, before I uh, answer the question, I just wanted to say real quick. Speaking on LeBron James and Life Water, um, and you guys are gonna think I'm joking. Haha. No, I put this on my mother's life. I saw that Instagram post. LeBron James signed with Life Water, and you know damn well I walked my caboose down to the gas station near my house, and I bought two no bottles. Way. I bought two bottles of Life Water. I put that on my mom, bro. I put that on my mom. <laughs> I bought Life Water, and I'm a Life Water guy now. All right. It's what? a great option. Hey, listen, they got bro. this like, hey, look, bro, bro, listen, well, hold up. I understand why he signed with Lifewater because their bottle is like, it got a, like a little nipple tip at the top. It's nice. It's nice. Pause, I like it. I like pause, it. Pause. Hey, it's tough. Pause. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, but uh, back to, <laughs> back to uh, Hoop's question. I'm not going to lie. You guys are going to think this is a hot take. I'm not saying I'm a hater of Gatorade. I'll drink Gatorade if it's there and I'll sometimes buy it like I do like it. But water any day of the week water any day of the week like bro gatorade gets to a point where if i drink too much of it i kind of get sick of it you know what i mean where it's just like okay, when, like okay yeah I, I get you i get you i, I gotta ask one question because it just popped in my head now that you just said that right are you okay what type of person are you and i want both of you to answer this right. at restaurants where okay. y'all sit down and they come over and they say what would you like to drink are y'all the tap water people or do y'all like actually get the drinks that's on the menu like i will i will sometimes get water um i've been trying because like I, I have soda only every once in a while, so it just right. tastes better when I have it. Um, so I mean, sometimes the water's nasty, but uh, yeah. I, I, have, I do get water at restaurants sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. I like to watch my figure. Okay, I like I track my food and stuff. You know, I count the calories. So I usually get both. Like like when they first come up to me, and you know how they always ask, "What do you want to drink?" And some restaurants don't do free refills, right? So she's like, "What do you yeah. want to drink?" I'll ask for a diet Pepsi, and I'll finish the diet Pepsi before the food comes, and then I got to spend another four dollars. What? Right, and I, and I, and just as the great Kendrick Perkins told me once when I spoke with him, you the always great get, you, you always Perkins you don't always go together, bro. listen listen the great Kendrick Perkins think about this I get in a live with him and this these are his words of wisdom to me not keep grinding not you know chase your dreams always at restaurants ask for drinks without ice because they'll give you more they'll give you more of the drink and uh, I to this day I drink warm Diet Coke at any restaurant but listen I'll always ask for oh a water. God. I'll ask for a water at first so I can have something to sip on. And then when the food comes, I ask, hey, could you please get me a Diet Coke with a slice of lemon in it? Because I'm a bougie man. And 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 uh, 10 times out of Diet 10. Coke 10 out of 10. Lemon in it. Bro, I'm telling you, you ask for for a lemon? Like on the side, you squeeze. Oh, I'm telling you, it's different, bro. It's yeah, different. yeah, we, we got to get back to this Gatorade water question. <laughs> I want to oh. answer this myself. So talking about Paul George and the Gatorade flow, I'm not going to lie. Gatorade flow clears Gatorade. The taste, it's more like a water consistency. I've never had because it. Because Gatorade, it, it is a little thicker. Uh, but the flow tastes just like water. I don't know why. I feel like it's discontinued now, but that stuff was gas. Um, but I am a water guy when I'm working yeah. out. Honestly, even if it's room temp like or, or yeah. hot. Like like warm water when you're working out, like that just hits. Whoa. whoa like, it doesn't even whoa. need to be cold. Whoa, I'm whoa, being dead serious, bro. Warm water? Bro, I, was, I, I was hooping the other day outside. It was like 85 degrees. The the water wasn't even refrigerated, and it just it goes down. Like, it's it's really, really... Uh, I feel like okay, there was a scientific will, study done, hold up, that it was more hydrating. Okay. I think so. I'm being dead serious. I will say this. Uh, I would rather warm water over any warm drink. Like, I'll agree with you on that. Like, it's not as bad as other warm drinks. And also, I feel like it's easier to down because anything that's super cold, I feel like your body stops it. It's like brain free. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, I do agree with you. Like, warm water isn't the worst, but I wouldn't, like, choose to fill up my bottle with warm water. Yeah. Do you mean yeah. warm or do you mean room temperature? No, no, no. I mean warm, like when it's hot outside. So you prefer warm over room no, temperature? No, no, no. I don't say I prefer it, but I prefer that over Gatorade. Yeah, yeah. 100%, okay. 100%. Okay. Um, but I do, I do love Gatorade. Cool Blue's great. Um, I'm a green apple. Do you our... guys have green apple? I no. Grapes, I, yeah, yeah. Grapes green apple is tough. Green, green apple is the best, bro. You got to try green apple. I'll yeah. send you one from Canada, but continue. All right. I need to. Water. Well, anyways, it's, it's your turn, Sandy, because we're getting into oh, our second segment. Of course. My apologies. Um, we didn't have a name for this segment, but, you know, it's free agency. Guys are signing deals. And DeAndre Ayton uh, returns to the Trouble. Suns. Trouble in Phoenix. Offer sheet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> DeAndre Ayton uh, returns to the Suns after the Suns uh, match the Pacers offer. He's returning on a four-year, $133 million deal. Uh, the largest offer sheet in NBA history. 
Uh, it seems like we're witnessing a lot of uh, NBA records uh, broken in terms of uh, money. Uh, but that's just the league nowadays. Uh, and my question to you guys, uh, do you believe that going into next season, the, the chemistry between Aiton and the Phoenix Suns, you know, his teammates, the front office, everyone, um, took a hit? Because we know he kind of sat out at the end of the season because the Suns weren't offering him a rookie extension or it didn't seem like they were going to like other teams were. Um, and it took the Suns literally like realizing that they're going to lose Aiton for nothing to the Pacers if they don't give him the money. Uh, which is why they finally decided to pay him. It seemed like they were hesitant to pay him the whole summer or the whole offseason. A lot of rumors, you know, Miles Turner, sign and trade, this and that. How do you guys think that, like, do you guys think Aiton is really going to last with the Suns? Do you think they just signed them back to have a piece to trade in the future? Or do you think they're going to work through this chemistry and try to run it back with them? Um, I think DeAndre Aiton sitting out, especially when the Suns were a playoff team, like, it's one thing if they're a regular season team and it's just about, you know, getting the pieces together. But, like, they were contending um, until that very last game when they got blown out. But just the fact that he gave up, um, I think the teammates would definitely have some disagreement with that. Especially Chris Paul, mm. who his his clock is ticking. Um, I think he's not going to stay with the Suns long term. Um, I think once this whole Chris Paul thing is done, I think uh, the team's just going to look a lot different. But... I mean, I guess you sign him another year so you could try to contend again. But the Suns have not really changed much. The West has only gotten better. Right. But uh, if anything, I think the Suns, I mean, they, they have the same roster, but I would not imagine that the chemistry would be great. Yeah, I don't, I don't, think, that, I don't think that DeAndre Aiden is going to be there in like three years, honestly. And, and like you said, because I'm looking at Chris Paul, and, you know, Father Tom is knocking on Chris Paul's door. Uh, and we know that. We can see it. But Chris Paul is obviously so freaking fantab fantabulous that he's just, you know, playing like Chris Paul, defying the gods himself themselves. But I think that, for one, the, the Phoenix Suns are just an interesting franchise to me. Like, very interesting, right? You mean to tell me that in the 90s, right, when they get Charles Barkley and Kevin Duckworth and all of these farmer boy names um that they end up running into michael jeffrey jordan like they get all that success they get an mvp and then they run into michael jordan and then fast forward 30 years later they get the point god chris paul devin booker kendall jenner's um well i guess he, she just resigned that deal so congratulations <laughs> people congratulations um and then they get deandre aiden who i've always been high on since he walked into the league because i was like he's like a fundamentally good big man like he can shoot free throws. He can shoot mid-ranges. His hook shot's good. He can rebound. He can sometimes defend in the interior. But they mean you mean to tell me that they get all of that, a 60-plus win team, and then they try to run it, and they make it to the finals, and they run into Giannis. Then the next year, they're trying to get back to the conference finals at least because the Warriors have gotten good, and everybody wants to see that matchup. And then Chris Paul, D-Book, and DeAndre Ayton meet their father for the first time in the form of Huka Doncic and the rest of the Dallas Mavericks because they destroyed them in Game 7. Oh, they just, they're just they an interesting team. I don't think that they're ever going to win a title in like the next 20 years, but I think that their rebuild is going to be interesting, and it won't feature DeAndre Ayton. It's going to be right back to Devin Booker, right back to square one, and he's going to be leading them like he did in the bubble in 2020. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's my thoughts. Uh, I will say this. Uh, about the Suns, I do like the fact that they decided to match the Pacers' offer because having DeAndre Ayton on a four-year deal uh, brings his trade value, like it skyrockets his trade value, I feel like, because him as a trade asset when he's still on that rookie contract, they know his time's coming to an end. So whatever team they trade him to, there's a chance that team, you know, doesn't resign him or gets to keep him, like he leaves in free agency, right? So the fact that they have an, uh, DeAndre Ayton who's displeased with the Suns they keep him on a four-year deal. I definitely do see them moving DeAndre Ayton, and it could happen as soon as uh, the trade deadline this season. And and to, just to point out with the whole Chris Paul thing, if you put a decent center beside Chris Paul, he becomes an all-star. You know yes. what I mean? Chris Paul will take any center you give him and make him look like Jesus. Uh, so I feel like the Pacers clearly want DeAndre Ayton. I mean, they offered him the largest... Uh, offer sheet in, in NBA history, correct? I can definitely see a trade uh, revolved around DeAndre Ayton and the Pacers send out Miles Turner and a pick or, or Miles Turner and something else because clearly the Pacers are in rebuild mode, you know, putting, uh, uh, who is it, Halliburton 
and, and Aiton together. I know they just traded Brogdon for a whole bunch of uh, nothing, to be honest. But clearly the Pacers are right now trying to build up a new core, so I can definitely still see Aiton uh, most likely get shipped out to the Pacers. I think the Suns just did this, so at least like in the back of their head, they know no matter what, they're going to get something out of this, whether it's to keep Aiton or to get a new piece in return. But I think that's that's all there is to say about this whole situation. I, I have one thing to say. Uh, Hoop, if you want to go. You were talking about Chris Paul making centers all-stars. Right. Uh, I just saw a video with John Wall doing the same thing. And someone claimed that John Wall has never made anyone better. And I think that they got mixed up with... I Sorry, sorry I'm going off topic, but I just, it's, all good. It's, a, it's a funny situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, that John Wall is not a good leader, but he makes others better. Because he's a top five passer in the game when healthy. Oh, of and course. they said that... Marcin Gortat in his prime could be listed as a dependent on John Wall's taxes. And yeah, I was like, that is bro. a great line. And Chris Paul is the same way. And John yeah. Wall, I'm, I'm, he's going to be a boss on the Clippers. Clip hey, yeah, Clippers are going to be dope. Clippers, the Clippers. Clippers are going to be dope, man. Yeah, for sure. But uh, let's not get too off topic here. But yeah, I, I yeah, can't yeah. agree with you on that. I have been seeing that John Wall slander. Cut it out. All the slanders coming from 12-year-olds that didn't watch John Wall and the Wizards. Screw off. Screw off. I'm telling you right now, John Wall was different, bro. Remember that Celtic series? Okay, never mind. Yeah, continue. Let's, let, let's move on. <clears throat> moving forward, moving forward, we are moving now into are they tweaking? Only this time, we got ourselves a double whammy. It might as well be as lit as a Disney Channel crossover episode back in the day. Because <laughs> on today's episode of Are They Tweaking, we have Iggy and Bobby. And a lot of you know who Iggy is and half of you possibly probably don't know who bobby is but Iggy, I'm Iggy Azalea? <laughs> no i should have said <laughs> swaggy p or something and then maybe that would have uh, no anyway andre iguodala expressed his opinion of rashid wallace during a recent appearance on the dan lebetard show with Stu gots that if i messed up your name i'm sorry do better anyway rashid wallace Andre Iguodala said Rashid Wallace probably could have been a top five player in the league for a 10-year stretch. And this is the reason why he said this. He was shooting half-court shots, left-handed and right-handed. If Rashid Wallace played in modern-day NBA, if he played in our league today, he'd be a top five player in the league. He'd be better than Giannis all time. Not all time. He'd be better than Giannis, and I love Giannis. So, who? We're going to start there. With that tweak, with that one first, and then we'll work our way into Bobby from here. Um, go ahead. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so I have Rashid Wallace's uh, profile on Basketball Reference pulled up right now. Work. I see where where Iggy is coming from because, no, but like, I, I see where he's coming from in that Rashid would be nice in today's NBA. Mm -hmm. Six foot ten. He shot 33% from three for his career, but that's not better than Giannis, bro. Uh, <laughs> Dirty 30 is a sick nickname. Um and I'm pretty sure Rashid Wallace is also the guy who invented the three to the dome. I saw an interview on that saying that it wasn't actually Mellow, it was Rashid, and then Mellow just took it and ran with it. Um, but that, I mean, he's really not 14 points per game over his entire career. In my heart, I mean, it's I, Mellow. In my heart, it's still Mellow. I shouldn't have said that. It really is Mellow. Yeah. But, uh, like, for a, a four-time All-Star to be better than Giannis currently, like, that's just extreme. Uh, he must be best friends with Rashid or something. Or Rashid's yeah, like paying off his debt or something like that. That's crazy. I, I will say this about the situation. Um, I'm not going to give much of an opinion on it. Because to be honest, I didn't watch Rashid Wallace um, as much. Like, I, I don't remember him at all. I don't even think he was in the league when I started watching. I started watching in like 2010, 2009. So um, I, I'm not going to give an opinion on his game or how good he was as a player. But I will say this. Um in my 12 years of watching uh, NBA basketball, that is the first time I have ever heard anybody say Rasheed Wallace would be a top five player at any point in any era. You top know what I mean? Top 20 player. Top, yeah, like 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 t t anything. But it, it, it's just like, I'm going to have to disagree just because this is the first time I'm hearing of this and the reaction from the media seems to be wild and people are just calling mm -hmm. Iggy out saying he's tweaking. Um, I, better than Giannis, I highly doubt it. Again, I've never watched Rashid Wall, so I can't judge the guy. I'm not going to hate on his game. I'm not going to say anything about him. All I'm going to say is, if he truly was, if he truly would be better than Giannis, his stats would show it, his legacy would show it. But clearly it doesn't. I, I, maybe, maybe he'd be a borderline all-star because he was only a four-time all-star, like Hoop said. Um, Dirty 30 would have been hilarious as a nickname in today's age. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think he's like I'm. 
again, I can't really say anything about Rashid, which is which is why I don't really like talking about the quote. But uh, he's the only it. reason that the only reason that I'm not going to talk about it is because y'all have said "dirty thirty twice, which is literally a segue into our next tweaking moment. Because this is the Bobby part, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Bobby Marks is, I'm not surprised. But Bobby Marks is an ESPN analyst and a former NBA executive who said, not even 72 hours ago, Max, I actually think Steph Curry is the second best player of all time, right behind Michael Jordan. So, I don't even need to get into the, to the reasoning or anything like that. Y'all should have seen this by now on some sort of social media, whether it be Twitter or Instagram. But y'all have seen it. So now, Sandy, we're going to start with you, little snake. And we're going to start with you and let you let you uh, give your thoughts on Did that. You just Go call ahead. me little snake? No, little snake draft is what I meant. Uh, to say. Like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't call you a snake. <laughs> I know I can't call you a snake. That'd be Come on, bro. You're OKC okay, <laughs> yeah. fan. You've been calling Katie a snake for seven years yeah. now. Um. Are we actually discussing this? That's ridiculous. This take is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is um, this this is like, it has There's to be a joke. There's not much to talk about. The only thing I should ask is, uh, where is this guy's credentials? The uh, who let this man have an opinion? That's all. That's all I'm gonna say. No disrespect to you, Bobby, but I'm just saying. No disrespect. Who let this dude have an opinion? Yeah, no, but, on, no. <laughs> oh, but oh, 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 seriously, like. To have a platform that big, like to be an analyst or whatever you are for ESPN, and to say that, he's a LeBron real, hater. Though. You have to just be the biggest hater in the world. Like, there's a difference between having a hot take and being butthurt. I don't know what LeBron did to you or your favorite team, but let's relax. Let's take a step back. Take a breather. Why don't, why don't we do a 101 NBA for dummies? Kind of give you a step through and... and change the yeah. opinion up a bit because that's it's too far uh, i'm wondering if this guy has a say in the mvp voting i'd love to find that out oh my because god because if if i'll look it up after the episode and we'll update you next time but if he does i mean that just shows the whole system is screwed um you know in 2013 how lebron was supposed to be a unanimous mvp but one person gave mellow a vote he was that one person Bobby Marks? <laughs> yeah, he was probably that. I'm just making a joke. He was the, oh, like, I'm making oh. a joke that he was that one person. <laughs> Bobby Marks. My probably man. Stephen A. Uh, oh my God. But uh, Yo, I think I, I think that's enough for today. That, I mean, yeah, I can't. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Y'all, y'all, y'all explained it perfectly. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, uh, into segment four. Spidey senses. Uh, New York might get their Spider-Man as the Knicks have officially entered into trade talks with the Utah Jazz regarding Donovan Mitchell. And the Jazz are reportedly looking for a historic return. Danny Ainge, who is the former Celtics GM, now head GM of the, the Jazz, is looking to acquire Emmanuel Quickly, Obi Toppin, Quentin Grimes, Deuce McBride, and six first-round picks. If the Jazz won't accept anything but the Statue of Liberty, do you guys think a deal will actually get done with the Knicks? Say any start us off. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think a deal will get done. Um, not like, I don't know if you like, uh, that first trade package that the Knicks declined, that was like, all right, let's relax here, right? Six first round picks and four young dudes is a little too far, but I feel like Donovan Mitchell, since he came into the NBA, his name screams New York. I mean, his nickname is Spider, Spider-Man. The guy is built for the Madison Square Garden. I, wa I, I would love to see, if, if there's a move I want to see, it's Donovan Mitchell to the Knicks. I think he's a phenomenal basketball player, so I understand Danny Ainge's point of view where he's like, I want a historic return for Donovan Mitchell. Because it's very rare for, for, a, for a guy like Donovan Mitchell to hit the trade market, you know? And, and being the Knicks, they're not great at signing big, big names. They're not. Let's be honest, Hoop. I'm not taking a hit at you or the New York Knicks. No, no, no. I it's, agree. I made a video on that. Yeah, I'm just being honest here, right? But Donovan Mitchell, you know, he's one of the only... I think it's him, Michael Jordan, and another guard. I believe, Allen Iverson, correct me if I'm wrong. I remember seeing this somewhere. Uh, he's one of the only few guards to average 20 points per game in his first five seasons. He's taken the, the Jazz to the playoffs in every single one of those seasons. He hasn't missed the playoffs yet. Uh, I feel like he's underrated as being a first option on an NBA team. The guy's a great basketball player. Has his few slip-ups here and there defensively, but, I mean, he's still young. And I want to see him on the Knicks. And I think the Knicks can give up some young pieces for Donovan Mitchell. I think it's the right move for them to make. Six first-round picks is absolutely not the right move to make. I feel like I would package two or three young guys with three first-round picks. I think that's fair, uh, considering the the 
the transition the Jazz want to take. Clearly, they want to go into this uber rebuild like the Celtics did in 2012 with Danny Ainge as their GM as well. It's clear that Danny Ainge has taken that same route. So shipping him off to the Knicks for a bunch of young guys and draft picks, I 100%, 100% I want to see that happen, and I think it will happen. But just the initial trade package was a little too much. Yeah, I agree uh, with, the, with, the, with the first trade package. But I will say also that obviously, you know, as you all know, I'm going through it with the New York Knicks organization. I have been for the past three years. Um, and it's tough, you know, because like you said, the Knicks always can, can act as if they're putting their name out there for somebody to see it and they can attract these stars to come play in the Mecca because it just makes sense. Because like Saini said, there are certain NBA players you can look at and say he's built for something like MSG to be able to take on that pressure. I think Donovan Mitchell is an underrated, and I'm only saying this because and I hope you guys agree, and you may not. You may just say he's per- properly rated, but he's an underrated playoff performer to me because from the moment that, I mean, I'm talking all the way back to the bubble when him and Jamal Murray were trading 50 bombs back and forth. Like, this man was literally carrying the Utah Jazz and Rudy Gobert's lack of offensive ability throughout the playoffs. That was just what it was. Now, you mean to tell me that the New York Knicks can, have, can put together some pieces? Yeah, they can put together some pieces. It's the Knicks. Like, honestly, you as a Knicks fan who – long you know you've been there for a while i think that you could see that as well like there's that like there's some guys that you probably look at like i don't know emmanuel quickly let's say obi Toppin, let's say and they send those guys out for d mitch right if i was a knicks fan like you i'd look at it and say okay those guys i'm high on for the future of this of this uh team i was like you said you were high on quickly obi Toppin, you like him i'm the same exact way but at the same time i'd be like you know what if i got an opportunity to get somebody like him like spider that would change the entire culture of this place. Because literally, you went, you kind of went all in for Julius, for King Julius. And that didn't work out because it just hey, seemed hey, like... Hey, 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 hey. All, all NBA second team four seed. He yes. was nice. That was good. And he and still is good. nice. 20 and 10 is a down year for Julius. Do you... Okay, let me ask you this question, Hoop. Do you think that if Spider ends up in New York in a trade package, do you think that Julius Randle will be a part of that trade package sent no. back to Utah? No. I don't believe that the Jazz want anything to do with Julius Randle at this point in time, except for possibly use him for another first round. But if he were to go to ja- to the Jazz with no one on that team, he's putting up numbers. He is. Like, yeah. he's putting up big numbers. But I think that would be the only reason to get a, a, get more picks out of him. They would not want him for the team. Um, makes sense. Uh, I can see it. I can see it. No, they're, the they're... way. I... Oh, sorry. Who go? I, well, I'm going to go on a big rant here. Um, I think the whole point with the Donovan Mitchell to the Knicks – it's, it's interesting because Jalen Brunson is now here for four years. And if you bring in Donovan Mitchell, you, you pretty much have to keep Brunson because I'm pretty sure there's a trade kicker on him. Mm-hmm. Um, that's two six-foot-one guards in the backcourt. Um, and I, I think Donovan Mitchell and Emmanuel Quickly, if you, if you didn't get Jalen Brunson, is a scary backcourt because those are two guys with unlimited confidence and the ceiling on them is incredible. And it's not like they'd have better, you know, much worse offensive upside than Brunson and Mitchell. Because Brunson's not a fully developed point guard yet. And uh, Mitchell, while he has like a six foot ten wingspan, he's not a great defender. Uh, neither is Brunson. So the fit is interesting. And I think if we were to get Mitchell, you would see a starting lineup of Brunson, Mitchell, Barrett, Julius, and Mitch. Right. Which on paper looks incredible. I think the spacing could be shaky at times. The defense could be shaky at times. But if you're only going to give up Obi Toppin, Cam Reddish, I'll say five first and Quentin Grimes. I think they do hold on to Emmanuel quickly only because I think uh, Quick and Mitch are actually close friends. Um, I think the Knicks and Knicks culture definitely value quickly. I think the most out of any of those young guys because his confidence is just built for MSG. Um, I think the team could be great, uh, but it's just it's an interesting fit. And the thing is, the the Knicks are not going to attract a big free agent because we haven't. And we usually suck at drafting, so I think you have to t- kind of take the swing of Donovan Mitchell, and you can't give up too much. Um, and you, you know, you don't want to get fleeced. But at the, the end of the day, like, are you going to take the risk on developing Obi and Quentin Grimes? Because the team could be better without Mitchell. Because the fit isn't great. Grimes looked like he fits the system. He's a three and D player, but he's young, and he would be going into this thing trying to outplay Fournier. Like, it's still just the, the RJ and Julius show for this year. So there's a lot of factors to uh take into account i don't know if you guys have anything else to say but i have one more thing that i wanted to add on to this segment and that's the fact that if donovan mitchell goes to new york everyone's going to talk about how he's a six foot one point guard who can't defend 
and the narrative on him would go so downhill. And if Donovan Mitchell, I know there's other teams like the like the Heat that they could possibly that he could possibly go to. If Donovan Mitchell goes to the Heat, it's oh they just got a great young player who's gonna he's gonna make them a championship right. favorite. But if he goes to the Knicks, I saw, saw someone saying they were still a playing team. Like I don't know, I, I just don't know where the disrespect ends because obviously it's New York, right? Um, but that's just wild to me. I don't I, know where the disrespect ends. You sound like a dude who's like. You sound like a fan that's crying out for help. Please stop hating on us. We just want crazy. We just, I will say this. Nice. I will say this, Hoop. I I do love that point you bring up, where like the narrative on Donovan Mitchell next season all depends on where he ends up, and if he goes to the Knicks, it's gonna be a whole lot of trashing Donovan Mitchell. Because you know, now that I think about it, it, it feels like any star that lands in New York, people want to see fail. Nobody yes. wants to see anybody in, on the Knicks uh, succeed. And and, and oh, that's RJ clear. doesn't RJ doesn't say anything to the media, and they just yeah. they, they don't like him. Last year, going into the season, they had Danilo Gallinari on the top 100, and RJ Barrett was left off. That's ridiculous. No, that is no. ridiculous. That is ridiculous. No, I do agree with you that the Knicks do get too much hate. They're the biggest state. It, it, they are the biggest place to play. Uh, biggest place to play in the NBA. To be fair, the Madison Square Garden. But I I would not count out the Knicks if Donovan Mitchell goes goes there. Like I think the Knicks. Not a top four seed to be honest, but they're a playoff team. No, they're I a playoff they're team. A playoff team. Top four is a little much. Yeah. To like, and especially for their first season, I feel like their first couple of games they would be trying to figure out like how are we gonna like defensively, how's this gonna work? Offensively, we're 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 dominant. Like I, I I could see them being in the top ten teams offensively. Defensively is where they're gonna struggle. Obviously, right? Like you said, Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell is a terrible backcourt defensively. Let's be honest. And especially they're gonna be at a brand new system for the first time in their careers. Correct me if I'm wrong. Brunson's never been on any other team than Dallas. Donovan hasn't been on any other team than Utah, right? So they're going to have to try and mold into this new system on the biggest stage in the NBA, the Madison Square Garden, as two 6'1 guards who are both offensively gifted, right? How, how, how's, the ball, like, how's the ball usage going to work? Who's going to have the ball in their hands most of the time? Is Julius going to be able to set aside his ego? I can, 100%, yeah. I can 100% trust RJ to do that because I think RJ is a team player. RJ is a sick guy to have on your team. I have no issue with RJ taking a step back. Can Julius take that step back? Especially, he, he thinks his contract says he doesn't. You know what I mean? When you get paid the big bucks, you expect to put up the big numbers. Um, Donovan Mitchell, obviously, he's going to get traded here to be the franchise player. That's going to be their mindset because you're giving up all these first-round picks and all these young guys. Jalen Brunson just signed a $100 million contract. He probably expects to have a boost in his career. So there's definitely going to ha- there's There's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, egos being a big thing. Um, is Thibodeau still coaching the Knicks? Yes. yes. And, and yeah. That's why I, I have some hope for Donovan Mitchell as a yeah. defender. If the offensive load is taken off where RJ can take a possession, right. Brunson can take a possession, I think his, his physical tools are crazy right. to be a defender. And, and honestly, Donovan Mitchell, uh, as much as I do respect how he's dragged the Jazz to the playoffs, not saying that it was a carry job, the Jazz have had a great team. Um, let's be honest, he's the main guy offensively. The ball is always in his hands, and that clearly hasn't worked. Clearly it hasn't, right? They're always a 60 wins regular season team. What happens in the playoffs? Absolutely nothing. Because teams learn how to lock down the Jazz. Just guard Donovan Mitchell. That's all you need to do. Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert gets nothing done offensively because the Jazz just don't want to use him like that. Um, so I think Donovan Mitchell needs to realize that me having the ball in my hand this much isn't working. If I go to the Knicks, I got to learn to take a step back offensively. I'll still be the main guy. I'll still be putting up these big numbers, but I gotta, I gotta have a look or two extra at RJ, a look or two extra at Brunson, a look or two extra at Julius Randle. You know what I mean? If they can figure out how to play as a team, that on paper, that Knicks team would be scary. And I'm saying that like I have no bias towards the Knicks. I do like the idea of Donovan Mitchell going there. I think that whole his whole personality, the fact that his nickname is literally Spider Man, that would blow up. Like I think that would be great for the New York Knicks. Everything like the more team success, better team branding. You know what I mean. Attract more fans. I love it, but like I said, for them to be a, a a serious playoff team, a lot of a lot of things have to work out. Like a domino effect has to happen in a good way. I think Randall would eventually get traded for some supporting cast. Yeah, because uh, like a, a three and D wing. I really because now that you're saying it, he's very ball dominant, and while he is an extremely skilled scorer for his size, I do believe that even though he's inefficient at times, right. Um, I don't understand what he's going to do off ball. I don't, I don't see it. Nothing. And unless he becomes this powerhouse defender, which I don't see happening, I think he's going to be just someone standing out there. So I think he will eventually get traded if Mitchell comes to the Knicks. And I love the Honestly, idea of, of, I, of getting, sorry, G, I love the idea of getting rid of Randall for like two solid role players, because I don't think you're going to get much tr- like back in terms of like draft picks and stuff. 
because Julius Randle is coming to to a point where he's going to get older and, and he's just going to get worse over time. I think his peak was that season where he got all NBA second team. We're never seeing that again. So I think the Knicks should trade them while trade him while they can for a couple of pieces that can you know they know their role, they know what they're there to do, there to do. Sorry, I had a little bit of a lisp, and um, they just go and get the job done. I agree. Well, I think that's all we got for this. Uh, uh, Z had something to say. Sorry. This long, or did we? Oh, I was just going to say that considering that my birthday is in two days, and then that's also the same time that my contract with the Knicks ends. Like, if they land D Mitch in ten days, like I might, I might have to resign. Like for real, <laughs> I, I, like, I like that team. It, it's much better than anything I've gotten in the last three years. So, you know, all my ZZ Huncho Huncho Sapiens out there, all my young goats, just know. That yeah, I, I, I might I might come back. Oh, and, we had yeah. we, we had a little disconnect, but you you came back perfect. I, thought, I didn't say a word to. I saw it disconnect. I thought it was I thought it was gonna I disconnect. I got scared he, for a second. But you're back. He you're would back. never leave his Huncho sapiens. He would never leave them. All right, let's uh, uh let's continue before Z gets cut out completely. I would hate for that to happen in this great episode. I think we got your secret segment. Yeah, this, correct. Are we done? Yeah. I think so. Holy moly, bro! That the, oh yeah, the check. Look at the time, boys. I, I, we're, we're catching up on you. Before my For secret real, segment, bro. guys, this was like one of the it best holds. episodes. That was the most free flowing conversation. Good, right, good job. Manscaped. Great, great. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> la podcast manscape code. Anyway, uh, let's head into my secret segment. It's not even a secret at this point. You know what's happening at the end of every episode. I got a bang your question for you guys, and we're gonna argue it out. Steph Curry, we all know. The man just added a ring to his legacy. He got that finals MVP. There's talk of him being a top 10 player. Now, next season, there's a chance the Warriors run it back. And if they do, we all know they're going to want Curry to get that second finals MVP. He's going to be the main guy, like always. So if Curry adds another ring and finals MVP next season, let's say, hypothetically, they win it all, does that, number one, put him over Magic Johnson? And number two, put him in the top five players of all time? Z, I know your answer because, you know... You're a, you're a Curry guy. So we'll start with Hoop, and then we'll head towards Z, and hopefully we can see you guys duel it out. But Hoop, what's your opinion? The thing about Magic Johnson is that his career is is like a movie because he only played 10 seasons, I believe. He went to nine finals, I believe, and won what? Like five rings? Five. five. Like that, It's just incredible. Finals MVP in his rookie season. That's what I'm saying. Like his career is so – it's a legacy, like the epitome of a legacy. And for Steph Curry, even if he gets another ring in finals MVP, uh, let's say if he does it like he did this year, where the stats aren't, you know, popping off the page necessarily, he's the main guy. It's not like a like a Shaq level finals MVP performance where he was putting up like 40 a game. Right. But if he has another one like last year, I don't know if that's enough to jump magic um, for for the uh, the older guys out there, like anyone above 30. I think Magic Johnson's really cemented in their minds as the greatest point guard of all time, which is really the guys on ESPN. Um, Bobby Marks is, you know, you don't think Steph Curry, but I mean, for the, for the young people, I think it would become more like an MJ LeBron war at right. that point. It would not be one-sided. I will say this What's about, uh, Magic Johnson real quick before Z, you say this point, uh, in his rookie year, he played with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Right. Yeah, but he has the finals MVP. And but look the at the final, era, the, uh, the final MVP, but look at the era they were playing in too, compared to the Steph Curry era, but I, I, I'm not, Z, you go. I'm just throwing some you, stuff out well, there. Well, Sandy just literally explained, like, how it's going to go. Like, it's it, – because, I, I, like I said before, I think that it's interesting, Steph being in the top ten right now, and if he were to do what Sandy is hypothetically saying that he could do, uh, win another championship and a finals MVP, that bumps his total of, of championships up to five. And he has two finals MVPs. Technically, we all know it should be three. Um, but it's all hypothetical, of course. Five titles, the greatest shooter ever, re completely changed the entire game of basketball. And on top of that, this is what I, pr I proposed this question to Sandy earlier. I said, if Steph Curry right now, you can look at social media, you can throw out Nick Bleach Report, uh, ESPN could put a freaking head to head comparison between Steph and Magic and say, who you got? And a lot of people are starting to put Steph and say Steph's the, the best point guard. They're putting Steph over Magic. They're already doing it off of, his, off of this finals uh, appearance alone. So for me, what I find interesting is, and I love doing this to the NBA fans, I love doing it to the community. It's where a certain narrative is already put in place, right? But you have to dig deeper into that narrative. So my question is, for all of y'all that say Steph is like a better point guard than Magic, where does Steph fall in your top 10 then? Because if Steph were to win another ring and tie Magic, he would also have more than LeBron in his career. So Steph, so I'm just saying like, that would rise him up 
because he would be at a point where he took over the 2010s into the 2020s. So it just it would be like you would you he would rise in stock due to dominance and that greatness factor. And the reason that I had magic over Steph for so long is because in 1979 he went berserk in Game Seven without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Played the five and went out there and dropped what 42, 11 or whatever it was. But he went stupid as a rookie. And then transitioned from that into the rivalry with Bird, which saved the NBA, which is another reason why I think he's right there in the top five chilling because, like you said, he's been, he was in the league for about 11 years and, and went to the finals nine times. I mean, even, like, that's just, it's just incredible. So I, I would say that Steph's stock would definitely rise because you would have to put a lot more things into perspective than just, Oh, is he better than Magic now? Because mm. it's gonna if he gets a fifth championship, mm. Bobby Marks is gonna have a whole lot of little Bobbies in the comment section saying, "Is he better than LeBron? Is he better? I think he's better." So I, yeah, that, that's probably gonna happen. Um, I, I don't really have a real answer. Whether you say Magic is the greatest point guard of all time or Curry, I respect both opinions. But if you use any other point guard than Magic or Curry, then I'm like, you're tripping. But John uh, Stockton. Yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, I, I cannot stand people. Who say John Stockton is like a top three point guard? Oh, no, he's, he's, the not. he's not. I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but I don't have John Stockton in my top five, and I'll defend that to the death. No cap. I, I, Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is a better point guard all time than John Stockton. I can mess with that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, we're ending it on that. No, 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 Z, don't even say anything. I know you're about to argue with me. We're ending it on that. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, I'm I'm gonna, I gotta, I gotta talk about our next episode. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick. Uh, so the hat I'm wearing right now, for y'all on Spotify, you can't see it. I'm wearing a Hooperverse hat. I just put a video out on my personal page, Hoopology, that Nico Mannion will be joining us on the podcast as our first NBA guest my on boy. episode 7. Uh, we are super hyped. So if you could drop some comments like with some questions that we could ask him, we want to talk about his music taste. Is, is he a Swifty? Uh, what he likes to well, eat? Oh, he better be a Swifty. He, he better, better be a Swifty. Swifty. <laughs> But uh, just some fun stuff. He's going to talk about his story that really ESPN did not cover at all. He has an amazing story. Um, how he founded Hooperverse, what exactly Hooperverse is, because it's very complicated. But it's all good stuff, and we're just happy to keep on moving forward in this podcasting world. Um, Richard Jefferson might be in our future. I have a connection to Isaiah Hartenstein on TikTok. Nate, uh, Dude! On Nate Darling is coming. Mysterious. Nate Darling is coming, I promise. And if you guys don't know who Nate Darling is, just look up. No, you know what? I'm not gonna say anything. We'll wait for the day. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we, the day. we have some we have some really cool guests, and it's yeah. just amazing to have an guys, opportunity like this. Honestly, in the first, we're not even a month into this podcast, and the amount of love you guys have shown us across all platforms, you guys are really blowing this up way more than I could have imagined in the first month. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The moves we're making, the time we're all putting in individually, it's it's for you guys, and we're about to blow this out the water. This podcast is only just getting started. The first five episodes sucked compared to what you guys are about to see. But oh, I, God. I think this is a great way to end it. Boys, this was one of my favorite episodes. I'm not going to lie. We this can I a, say this as well? Because yes. y'all went on tangents to the fans that I didn't get to. I love each and every single one of you. My young Huncho Sapiens. My young La Hoopy Ali. My La Hoopa Lalage. What, what would you – yeah, y'all need to come up with like a fan base or something because I no, can't – No, facts. Because like you know, mine, would, when mine would naturally be Hoopers, but that makes no sense. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like Hoop Juniors. What if we called them like Hoop Juniors? Hoop uh, Juniors. Hoop the Loops. Uh, little Tykes. Hoop the Loops. Hoop the loops. Little what? The, little like the little, the, the little tykes hoop. Oh. Like my mini hoops. Oh, little tykes. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's fair. You can call them mini hoops. That'd be cool. I call cool. mini hoops. That's dope. Yeah. Okay, Shane, you need something. I call, them, I call mine real I call mine real ones, all right? The, can, the Canadians. <laughs> yeah, dude. The Canadians. Yes, bro. You could have, like, um, what's the what's the name of the of the mascot for the Raptors? What's his name? The Raptor. I know it isn't it's Raptor. Raptor? <laughs> Okay, never mind, never mind. All right, all right, we should probably wrap up this episode before they hear a whole lot of us just talking about random stuff. But before we end <laughs> we the episode, love you. right before we end the episode, and I'm going to end it right when I say this, so everybody do your outro. I'm going to end the episode on a fun fact that nobody knows, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a personal fact. I am half Russian. Goodbye.